pray. He'll come and fill us in Jesus' name. Let's try to stop as we pray together. Tonight is your night. We're celebrating the power of the Holy Ghost tonight. And the Holy Ghost will fill you to overflowing in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we bless your name for this glorious day. We thank you, Lord, because you are leading us into a higher experience, deeper experience, greater experience than we ever knew before. We pray, Lord, tonight will be the night of Holy Ghost power for every one of us in Jesus' name. Fill your people, Lord. Saturate your people, Lord. And you, everyone, with power in Jesus' name. We pray that all hindrance will be taken out of the way. And it's he that closed the door before for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in any of our lives. Take everything away in Jesus' name. Spirit of the living God, sweet Holy Spirit, fill us, we pray. We know you are going to do it. We know those who have never tasted of this power of the Holy Ghost tonight will be a glorious night for them in Jesus' name. But those who have had the infilling and dwelling baptism in the Holy Ghost before, tonight there will be a repetition. There will be a refilling. And we pray that will come in greater force and greater fire and greater power upon every one of your people in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We're looking at Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. Empowered by His Spirit. The Lord has called you. And He wants you to do something here in the kingdom. And to do that thing effectively, we need the power of the Holy Ghost. The equipping of the Holy Ghost. The empowering of the Holy Ghost. We're looking at Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water to repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Today is that day. Luke chapter 24, I'm reading verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. That power is coming. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. Verses 4 and 5 are being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father which says he, ye have heard of me for John truly baptized with water but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence but age but he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. All those references were read, give us the promise of empowering, the promise of being baptized in the Holy Ghost, the promise of being saturated in the power of the Holy Spirit, and the promise of rising up and be what he has called us to do in this great mighty power when we talk about the holy spirit the holy spirit indwells believers to empower us to live for christ to empower us to serve god profitably in him that he is in the holy ghost through him that is through the holy ghost by him that is by the power of the holy ghost we empowered to pray we empowered to preach we empowered to seek souls we empowered to shepherd them shepherd the sheep we empowered to deliver the captives we empowered to destroy all the works of the devil we empowered to heal empowered to harvest souls into the kingdom 
empowered to love, empowered to labor, we're empowered to walk in the spirit, and we're empowered to work for Christ. That's why tonight we're looking at this important subject, empowered by His Spirit. There are three things we're going to look at and then I'll release you into the Holy Ghost. And the Lord Himself will release His Holy Ghost in your life, in your soul, in Jesus' name. Number one, experiencing the powerful baptism of the Holy Ghost. Experiencing the powerful baptism in the Holy Ghost. Number two, exercising the possessed baptism of the Holy Ghost. We possess that power. We possess that outpouring. We possess that promise. And because of that, we exercise it. We express it. We walk with it. Number three, expecting. Your expectation will not be disappointed. Expecting the promised baptism of the Holy Spirit. We experience Him. We exercise His power. Now we expect the promised baptism of the Holy Spirit. Number one, experiencing the powerful baptism of the Holy Spirit. From the Old Testament, all those men and women called of God, they did what they did by the power of the Holy Ghost. You think about Moses, that man was filled with the Holy Ghost to overflowing. And then we're told about Joshua. In the case of Joshua, Moses laid hands on Joshua. Laying hands on him, he received of the Spirit of the Lord. There were 70 elders walking along with Moses. Again, all those 70 elders, when Moses prayed for them, they received the Holy Ghost power. And then they began to prophesy in the camp. You come to David as Samuel came to the house of Jesse and anointed him with oil. You'll find the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon David. And then you come to those prophets of old Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, Malachi, until Malachi. And you find all of them, the major prophets and the minor prophets, they had the spirit of the living God in them. And it was by the power of that spirit spirit of God they did what they did and then Jesus came and before he came there was John the Baptist and when John the Baptist was to be born even from his mother's womb because of the assignment the Lord had given him he also had the power of the Holy Ghost and then Jesus came and when Jesus came in the power of the Spirit of God you know he I was conceived the Holy Ghost shall come upon you Mary and that holy thing that shall be born of you shall be called the son of the heart because with God all things are possible and because of that possibility possibility in Christ possibility in the Holy Ghost when he was tempted in the wilderness we're told that he was driven he was driven by the Holy Ghost into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil he came back out of that it was in the power of the Holy Ghost and then he took the book of Isaiah he said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the, to the poor and he has anointed me to heal the sick and also deliver the captives the power of the Holy Ghost came upon him in a mighty way he went to river jordan while coming out of river jordan we're told the holy ghost came upon him like a dove and then the spirit of god as he came upon him the father spoke from heaven this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear him i'm telling you that all those people from the old testament onto the new testament onto this generation what we need to do everything the Lord has called us to do is the power, is the fire, and is the strength and the might of the Holy Ghost. And tonight it will come upon you. That power, that might, that strength will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Number one, experiencing the powerful baptism of the Holy Ghost. The apostles, when they were given the promise, they waited. And they waited together in Jerusalem. And they prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed. And when they prayed, it tells us in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, thank God your own day has fully come. 
that day of the power of the immersion in dwelling of the Holy Ghost upon your life, that day has come today when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place, one mind, one goal, one focus, one prayer, one desire, one expectation, one faith, and one pursuit. They were all with one accord in the in, in one place, and suddenly. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And it says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were how many of them? And they were how many of them? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with all the tongues as the Spirit gave them or trans tonight is that night all filled for the holy ghost as the spirit of the living god the holy ghost gave them or trans experience it that's what they experience i'm coming now to acts of the apostles chapter 8 acts of the apostles chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 14 acts chapter 8 verse 14 now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. He sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. They sent Peter and John to Samaria. And all those people who had been prepared because they were saved, who had been prepared because Philip had been teaching them, they were baptized in water and they were sanctified and they abandoned their past and then they came on now to the new life. They needed this power to be able to move on in the strength of the Lord, in the might of the Lord. And it says when Peter and John came up, came to them, prayed for them and they received the Holy Ghost you'll notice something in the New Testament everyone those apostles came to and they prayed for and whether they laid hands on them or just prayed for them the Holy Ghost always came and tonight the Holy Ghost is coming I said the Holy Ghost is coming and the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon every life in Jesus name do you remember when Saul of Tarsus, so became Paul, when he was on the way to Damascus, then the Lord met him. When the Lord met him, and the Lord, you know, asked him, Why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? And then he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the priest. What shall I do, Lord? And then he was directed to Damascus. He got saved. He got sanctified. And all those three days was praying and praying and even fasting, waiting upon the Lord. And now when Ananias came unto him, look at verse 17. Acts chapter 9, verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and put his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, he became a brother already born again already, a child of God already, chosen by God already, appointed by God already. Brother Saul, the past was gone, a new life was beginning. All the past persecution, all the past injury, all the past blasphemy, all that was gone, a new life had come to Saul. A renewed life had come to Saul. A righteous life had come to Saul. He was a safe man, and we can even say a sanctified man. He had laid everything upon the altar. He was ready now for anything. The Lord will say. And so I asked him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive that sight, thy sight, and be filled and be filled and be filled with the Holy Ghost. You'll notice something. All the people that were mightily used of God in the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, they did that by the power of the Spirit of God. As we come here today, I look at you, your future is bright. You are going to do express for the Lord in the future. And to do everything the Lord has appointed you to do, you need the power of the Holy Ghost. And thank God, you don't have to travel far or go far before you have that power of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, tonight, the power will come upon your life. And so you see Paul the Apostle, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm looking at chapter 10 of Acts. Acts chapter 10. 
I'm reading verse 33, Acts chapter 10, we're looking at verse 33. Immediately, therefore, I, Cornelius, said to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God? You can tell such a man, Cornelius, he was a righteous man, he was a devout man, apart from religion. Now he has given his life. Everything that he said, I'm ready now. My heart is open. Anything the Lord has appointed for you to tell me and to tell us. He gathered all the people together. He even started doing some evangelism before Peter came. He gathered all those people together. He said, now we are here and we are ready now. Whatever it is, the Lord wants you to tell us we're ready and then we're told that peter opened his mouth and began to talk to him look at verse 44 it says while peter yet spake these words that is while peter was still preaching he had not come to his point three yet he had not come to his conclusion yet he had not even started praying for them yet it says while peter yet spake these words the holy ghost fell on all them all them all them which had the word and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished they were surprised amazed as many as came with peter because that on the gentiles also was poured out the gift of the holy ghost for they heard them speak with tongues and magnified god then peter answered and said can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the holy ghost as well as we the same holy ghost as well as we the same power as well as we the same authority as well as we what you are receiving tonight is the same power as the apostles received the same authority as the apostles received, the same fire and the same seal as the apostles received, and you become a, a vibrant believer even tonight in Jesus' name. After all, that's what the Lord promised. He said they shall receive power, and what came upon there was power. It came with signs, it came with speaking in a new language, a language they never learned. The Holy Spirit just came and he announced his supernatural presence by that new language that they spoke. But the major thing there is the power. Everybody say power. And when that Holy Ghost comes to you tonight, every weakness will be driven away in Jesus' name. And then the strength of the Lord, the might of the Lord will be so much upon your life. That's why we use the word saturation. It saturates you. It fills you. And it fills you to overflowing tonight.